Hello and welcome, and we are here with the Grand Finals! That's right! Finally, it's time for the Grand Finals. We have got MUFC on the Dire side with no team profile set up, but we will live through that. And we have Orange on the Radiant side, and they meet each other for the second time today. And it is, um, it is Orange that knocked MUFC down to the loser's bracket, which forced them to play still in the loser's bracket finals that we just saw. And uh, Orange, Orange winning through the winner's bracket, but there is no winner's bracket game advantage. So make sure that you keep that in mind. We're gonna be seeing Orange, uh, seeing if they can if they can repeat history, so to speak. I mean, they have now got one game already taken against MUFC. MUFC, though, I mean, I guess like there's there's different sides to this story because I mean this is a long day for both of these teams. They've been here for almost twelve hours. And they have been playing for almost 12 hours. Now for Orange, they just took a very long Ten break because they remaining. had the lose they had the winners break at finals. And then they had basically Five what like what two hours remaining. break? So that can be good for uh, for Orange. No, they're all rested and stuff, but it also can be working against them, considering MUFC did not have a break. MUFC continued Orange playing. Well they had a break for an hour and then they played a couple of games. One game, actually. So they might have been Dying warmed up pick. with that. And um, we'll see if Orange can actually, uh, you know, just jump right into it. Or if they actually Orange need some warm-up time in the form of pick. a game that they might give against them UFC. We'll see that. Uh, by the way, of course, this is the Asian Gaming League. Uh, we can support them. Yes, we can. By liking them on Facebook. Facebook.com slash AsiaGL. Make sure you do that because we want to have more of these events. We want to have bigger events like these. And we want to be able to have them so many sponsors that they can get their caster to the location. Yay. Ten so like them on Facebook. Remaining. Do it. For my own good. <laughs> Anyways. No, you can Five also keep uh, keep remaining. up to date there on all the leagues that they do. We uh, they have, for example, uh, upcoming online leagues. Dire team pick. In the coming uh, coming month or so, so if you are from the from the region of Asia, so or Asian region, you can check that out, and you can uh, definitely check uh, check out their Facebook for more information about that. But let's jump ourselves into the draft because we're here for the game. Um, one short disclaimer before we actually jump ourselves into the draft: I just said that these players have been playing for almost twelve hours. Orange I have almost been casting for almost twelve hours, so I might be a bit awkward in my casting than I normally am. So there we have it. Uh, but I'll try to do uh, my normal job anyway without. Oops, doing too much about that. It's <laughs> already starting. No, that's just just me almost suppling over my microphone. Doesn't matter. We are gonna be seeing Bat Darcy, yeah. Nyx, and Shadow Demon getting banned out. With the first pick and round already being done, uh, we have the first pick in the hands of Orange. So they s they picked up the Magnus as the first one, and then uh, MUFC replied with two solid pickups. Both alone Orange drew the Life Seeker, two heroes that we've ban. seen being banned out very often. With the Queen of Pain and the Weaver uh, up by Orange, so strong mid there as well as a strong, um, well, a strong lane harasser. We've seen Weaver on trial lanes before. We might see it again this time. We have a Rubik Dia to counter back. the RP, perhaps from uh, Orange uh, their side. Uh, but the thing that is the difference between the teams right now is that Orange basically got three lanes sorted. Well, MUFC still needs one of their lanes, depending on what that lone druid is going to do. If that lone druid is going to go to the off lane, or if he's going to be going somewhere else, they still need a mid, and that is something that Orange knows. Orange they ban out the Brewmaster, they ban out the Beastmaster, and there is one thing that is very clear with all these three bands, uh, two bands, but it's going to be three soon. They all have big level six ultis, and they all got like you have a life and lone druid, so both of them need, need a bit of time to. Um, to uh, you know, get their get their flow going. So you want to have a mid laner that can give them that time. So, for example, with the Brewmaster Split, force out some action on the map. With the Roar, force out some kills. And those kind of heroes are the ones that Orange bans out. I mean, there's there's uh, there's a lot of those kind of heroes. So we're gonna remaining. see which one they're gonna be banning out last. As for MUFC, they ban out both the, the Shrek remaining. as well as the Shadow, oh, sorry, as well as the Bane, and. Um, Dia By the way, ban. the Doom is not that awkward of a ban. It just means that Orange has watched the games of MUFC because MUFC actually picked up the Doom earlier today. And they won with it, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be in the Grand Finals because every game so far was best out of one, apart from this Grand Finals, which is a best out of three. 
but a uh, doom gets banned out. Um, but yeah, I was uh, saying, Lashrak and uh, the Bane get uh, banned out by MUFC. Known that the Bane is, of course, a very strong counter against the Life Stealer, and they just want to make sure Orange that there's not going to be super strong supports up for Orange. There's still Jakiro, though, works well together with the Magnus. We might see that one picked up, but they also need a setup for that one. I mean, Ice Path is great if you can hit it properly, and you know, at this level, you kind of assume that they can. Um, it's going to be actually be the Visage, and that is also a bit of a setup for an Ice Path, because that sh that the Shallow Grave, or sorry, the Grave Chill will be able to uh, to help them out that way. So we're going to be seeing the Visage again for more, I believe this is the second time they play that today, and they were not as aggressive with it as I was hoping they would be, but maybe they're going to be more aggressive with it this time, because they they look to be going for an aggressive trial lane, perhaps with a Weaver there, Visage there, and then something that can disable people, Ten because you have a lot remaining. of Nuke now, but you don't really have Shutdown. And that's sad. So five we still need second, a mid laner for UFC second. and probably, uh, well, either a support or a jungler, Orange depending on what they want to do. To, to be fair, we haven't seen any junglers today. Like, no enchant, no enchanters, not banned nor picked. Ooh. Nice picture, Bar Barda. I, don't ca I can't click it, but it's nice that they have the LAN vision from, uh, like, this all on LAN. Of course, they're all sitting in Kuala Lumpur there, somewhere. So it's always nice to have some uh, visual support to actually know that they're actually there. Uh, we have a Sand King, so I was talking about the Sable that they needed. Well, Sand King is gonna offer that for sure. Uh, we have got the puck getting banned up, being picked up by MUFC, so that's gonna be their mid laner, a very strong one. Remaining. Gonna be up against the Queen of Pain. And doesn't have one of those uh, big Five level six ulti remaining. thingies that they can use to try and take the game with, or trying to take the control with, but it's, it's overall a very controlly hero and is it gonna be um, gonna be the Queen of Pain, uh, no, Queen of Pain Puck? It's gonna come down to skill. And uh, as a jet point out, we might actually still have a Coddle being picked up here. It's a good hero to have against the Visage and if you're worried about an aggressive trailing being up against you, Picking up a Coddle will basically mean that the aggressive training is not going to work that much because the harassment that can be thrown out by a Coddle alone is just so much. And a Visage and a Weaver, two heroes that are pretty squishy. So we could still see that one picked up, but they could just still go for Jungle Hero. But we'll we'll see. They are ticking into their bonus time, something that Orange did not use at all today. Well, today, I mean this this game, that is. Oh! Oh, are you serious? Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Both teams have agreed to a best out of one. It is, it is 10 p.m. there. Well, uh, for extra information, I mean, I said it was a best out of three because it was planned to be, but um, the official starting time for the finals was actually um, 5.30 p.m. their time. And for their time, it's now uh, 10 p.m. Service. So you can imagine. Oranges that uh, to pick. that the time is uh, like it, it, it kind of run late, so it's the best out of one only. Unfortunately for us, um, I'm actually gonna tweet that out just so that people know that as well. There we go, tweet it out, boom. Can't tweet when I'm playing because I, I now just, you know, press caps lock and that was it. Anyways, game time. Game time indeed. And we're going to be seeing one winner. I want to take it all. The uh, the main prize, by the Ten way, seconds. it is uh, going to be 1500 a ring, a Malaysian ring it. I believe that's the way you say it. Uh, it comes down to about $500. The second prize is 1000 uh, so that's what they're fighting for, and of course they also get some uh, some sponsor Prepare items as well. So uh, they are s definitely not going to go home empty-handed. Neither of these teams are. It's just going to come down to who uh, gets number one. And to be fair, in a matchup such as this, like basically Malaysian showdown with the two best teams from Malaysia fighting for that one spot, it is it, there's so much more on stake than that money. This is the number one of Malaysia. This is gonna be the one who gets better. Now, of course, there's the best set. It's the best set of one. This one, so it's not too ideal, as of course we know, best set of five, the best set of nines are gonna be better for that. But it is, uh, it is definitely interesting to uh, to see this. Uh, these two teams, as I said during the previous game that we saw of them, 
the the players of these teams know each other through and through. They have played together. They have played with each other in the team. They have swapped around teams. They've, seconds, they've like they they come from the same community. Have been in the same teams. Have been practicing together. You know, they they know uh, each other, and it might have a big effect on the way they play. Might have a, had an effect on the way they banned and picked. Uh, we're gonna be seeing how they're gonna be doing it. We're gonna be having a uh, weaver. They're gonna be on the carry roll on the aggressive trial lane with the Sand King and the Visage hanging around there as well. They're gonna be going, whoa, up the high ground. Perhaps Winter saw them and that's gonna be um, begins. actually KYX way walking back. Let's take a look at who's playing what first. Sorry, my bad. We're gonna have Hontrex player up on the Lifestealer for MUFC. Winter will be on the Rubik. We'll be having Ling on the support Windrunner. On the mid lane, we have got ourselves too fucking good playing the puck. With on the bottom lane, gonna be FC FC playing the lone druid for his team, where he's gonna be going up against Mushi on his Queen of Pain. That's gonna be one enjoyable one to watch for sure. As we're gonna be seeing in the mid lane, it is uh Wow, did he change the Oh that's no, Ohio. Sorry, my bad. It's Ohio playing the Magnus. There we go, my bad. There. And uh, we're gonna be seeing Net on the Sand King. We are gonna be seeing KYXY on the uh, Weaver. And last but not least, where is he? There he is. It is Extinct playing the Visage. And uh, one thing to note ba about this is, um, I mean, MUFC, of course, they've so. just announced to add Sharky to their roster. Sharky is not in Kuala Lumpur at the moment, though, so he is not participating in this game. No. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of people, he's not making his debut. So, just so you are aware, and um, yeah, let's just uh, focus on the game. I'm actually thinking the first blood should be happening on the top lane. Uh, it's happened quite often that today that I said that when, you know, should be happening on the aggressive trial lane. Uh, when it actually ended up, whoa, bro, psych, wait a second, this might actually already be the first blood, the wind run is gonna be there, there's only one stack of soul assumption though, that's not gonna be ideal. And the weaver not even trying to do anything, because he wouldn't have been there fast enough. Look at this, this ward already for the dire side, just very careful, it is not even a sentry, just an observer to know where everybody is at all times. Uh, but what I was saying is that, um, like we've had a couple of times today, that there has been a first blood at different locations, uh, because of bad play, but I'm not expecting these from these players. Not at all. Sentry word to counter the sentry word that was already there. To counter the counter word that they didn't even do, they counter blocked with the with the body blo body block. And so we're gonna be seeing the Bacillus ring up on the Weaver. Gonna be getting himself a bit of extra armor and regen. So can be spamming out a bit of Ishikushi a bit more. X hanging around. I mean, like you, this is an aggressive trailing, right? The thing is about this aggressive trailing, they don't. They are. They are aggressive heroes. Like you don't really have got too many heroes that can save someone if someone goes aggressive on someone else. Like if Visage is gonna get initiated on, Weaver can't do anything about, apart from counter initiating. Net can't do anything apart from counter initiation. And uh, of course, the only one that actually has a getaway spell is a Weaver with, with his Shikushi. And we're gonna actually see Ned getting uh, forced away there. Gonna have to uh, be careful to walk back up. To not get caught out of position. He's gonna be seeing uh, the uh, Rubik straight away. Rubik actually gonna get helped by Link as well. As we uh, we are gonna be seeing FC FC playing on the Lone Druid. 7 for 1 for him. Mushi 12 for 8. So dominating the lane so far. Harassment is gonna come on to FC FC as well. As we do see in the one level 1 in the Shadow Strike is gonna be doing that job. There's no way for him to dodge that. So. Very annoying for him to deal with as we have Ohio level 4 gonna be throwing out some harassment on the buckle. Look at this, this back should be the first but Shockwave, boom! Well, Courier is gonna think, oh well, nothing to do here, nothing to see here, I'm on my way back. So I was just saying that there shouldn't be a kill on any of the other lanes, at least not until level 6. That would be my guess that like RP or Dream Coil would be able to do something. But uh, not gonna happen as we actually have Lone Druid. Running away with a very low HP. He still has a self though, will be forced to pop it. And there's nothing Mushi can do to stop him from doing that right now. And he's Too gonna just bad. continue to land his harassment as well. As uh, we're gonna see the courier bringing uh, nothing to him because he's just gonna be, re be returning his empty bottle. No. And uh, yeah, in the mid lane, like in theory, nobody should have died here. But that was just a bit of a. Uh, well. Uncontrolled harassment, I guess. I mean, the harassment came out from Magnus constantly, and I, as I said earlier as well, I mean, I am on Europe, and this server that we're, is being played on is not Europe, so I am having some issues connecting to the actual server of Dota 2, so you might see some laggy thingies going on, as you just saw people walking on the spot. Uh, but other lags and then that, like the, the walking on the spot kind of thingies, Dyer's that is in the game. Other kind of attack. lags might be on Twitch if you have issues with that. Send the report button by clicking the wrench that you see on the bottom end of the stream. 
and you will be able to help uh, switch out with that. And my, my stream as well, of course, because they will look into it if there is enough reports that actually say what's wrong. In the meantime, we have got the aggressive trial and not being as aggressive as I thought they might have been. We have got the Weaver sitting on 21 for 3 though, not doing bad at all. Lifestealer getting shut down slightly, 16 for 4 and I mean, they can pull on stack. So that is going to be good for Orange as well, meaning their supports can't get anything done. Meaning their levels are going to be just as low as, uh, as the levels of Orange. And I mean, saying just as low because, I mean, Orange is also not getting anything extra because they're not getting any kills, they're not getting any neutrals. And, I mean, Sand King is just standing here to block ca block creep camps. He is a human ward. Well, a Scorpion ward, I guess. But, you know, it's not really ideal at all. But it, it, it happens. And he's still level 1 because of that also. Means that we are actually having a slight level advantage for the Weaver, though, or should have. Even though the levels is not even noticeable. It's going to be mostly noticeable and that Visage is not level uh, level 2. Level 3 on both of the supports on the Rubik. Level 1 on the Sand King. KYXY. I, w I wonder what they're expecting to do here because it's, it's tough. You can't really initiate on them this way. You're either going to have a, a Rage that's going to go through from the life stealer to stop everything from happening. As we have Sand King uh, or Queen of Pain actually be getting harassed so much that he uh, had to go back. That's of course a level 5 helping out. Then Tangles on the bear. But... Um, we're gonna have a telekinesis to stop them from going in on someone as well. Then we've got a pa shackle shot, level 2. Because who cares about power shots if you're gonna be up against an aggressive trial and you need to be able to stop people from going in. So shackle shot is the one that's needed. So there's really not that much openings for orange to go ac to actually go in. And by the way, with the lone druid being level 5, all of a sudden, queen of pain. Is gonna have her lane. I mean, she still should be coming out ahead in theory, but Lone Druid is gonna be able to get to get last hits for free. Like Mushi can't really do that much against it. She, he shouldn't die, <laughs> but he is still gonna be uh, yeah annoyed about that. Bottle is gonna be returned as well as the bottle for Ohio is gonna be returned with the courier flying back towards the top lane. It's got Tranquil Boots for KS, KX, uh, KYXY for the Weaver. I'm gonna be helping him out to be able to stay alive a bit longer, and it's gonna be helping him out probably by having uh, to. Uh, he's probably gonna leave the lane. Is my point. He's gonna probably be by himself because the supports they can't really do anything here, and I think they realize that by now. And they might just try to go for the mid or the bottom lane to try to get a gank. Though having said that, I mean both the puck and the lone druid are really not tho those heroes that you can actually gank all too well. And uh, I guess I mean for MUFC side point of view, they have got a safe trial lane. That is, is, I mean, he's not getting that much for him, but it's, it's safe and the aggressive trial is not against them, it's not really doing that much. We actually have a rotation from the puck towards the bottom lane. The Queen of Pain is gonna get a harassed. She's level 6 right now, she could try to turn things around. Has to be careful though. And puck is actually backing off again, realizing he can't get a foot in the door. Knowing that the missed call has happened, there's no wards up on the bottom lane for Orange at all, apart from uh, there's only a ward right here, just got newly placed. But Pukka rotating back mid. We do have the Magnus being level 7 right now, so he can try to go for an RP. And I feel like I finished, started a sentence, but I didn't really finish it. About MUFC. Yeah, they had, of course, I mean, Lifestealer is not doing too great, but he's not doing bad at all. I mean, he is actually doing average, basically, basically doing okay for being up against an aggressive trilane. But even if they didn't win this lane, they are still kind of doing okay on this bottom lane, as we have got, actually, Lone Druid trouble. For him, and that is gonna be a kill. Boom, you're dead. RP being used for that one. Dream Coil hits up on two. Need more to piece to come in though. And Queen of Pain actually shouting. Puck taking a lot of damage. Puck getting a kill almost up on Ohio, but is gonna be able. Yeah, there he goes. No, he doesn't. Oh my god. That is gonna be so low. And Queen of Pain picking up the puck. I thought with a double damage rune he wouldn't be able to do that, but he doesn't. And that is two kills. Radiance Middle Tower. Two kills. Going the Dyer's way of orange on this bottom attack. lane. One for the puck, one for the, the lone druid. And all of a sudden, everything I said is no longer valid anymore. Well, doesn't matter. Or lo everything that I was gonna ba be about to say. Oh, I thought he got he was gonna have that with a with a double damage rune, but Magnus proving to be too tanky. Too damn tanky. Six armor. He's gonna be doing that one. We're gonna be having uh, the bear again Dyer's trying to harass Mushi a bit. He's got Chen in his uh, bottle though, so he's gonna be happy with that. And he's gonna be able to throw out a bit more harassment with that. He's actually TPing top. 
And he is gonna be using his uh, regen to the fullest. Use it, used it already actually. Gonna be trying to go four kill on someone. Gonna be making a difference in this aggressive trial lane. I don't think the TP was spotted, but the miss call will be coming out. And Mushi, all he needs to do is uh, blink himself in. We're gonna have Winter in some trouble. Okay, here's the blink, Sonic Wave, up on two. It is gonna be Rubik that dies. Uh, Mushi has to be careful that gets out of moon. It needs to blink, doesn't matter. Does a bottle charge, but will be not going down. We're not yet, the Bruce like stops. Hard Hunt trash player from going in. The wind already went down. Weaver picking up that one, and now Huntrash player might actually take a bit too much harassment from this Weaver as well. He w pops his Tranquil Boots there. Gemini attack actually going through. There's a Rage trying to help out. It might be enough. Might not be. It looks like it's gonna be enough. KYX by not gonna dive that. Too risky. But still, two kills going the way of Orange with the Queen of Pain. That's a very low Mushi. Gonna be running Dyer's all the way back, tower. and is gonna be attack. safe. Home save again. Two clutch escapes that could make such a big difference if they actually got a, they got those kills, but no can do. No can do. And the supports go down, and then it uh, is only one player left that hasn't died yet on the side of MUFC. It is only Lifestealer that hasn't died yet in their team, and that is going to be a lot of pressure up on him just to make sure that he is the one that indeed will carry the game long enough for this lone druid to actually get his farm up. Even though he's not doing bad, he is all of a sudden not doing as good as, anymore as he used to. As you see the net worth Never difference, it is Orange that is pulling out ahead on all lanes without taking down any towers so far. And the difference is actually quite noticeable compared to, like, considering there's not that many, t not, not any towers down. This is all kills and last hits. As we have got a rotation coming out from uh, both Winter and Ling, they're gonna go by roaming back top though, because now it's gonna be only KYX by that's hanging out on top. And the Huntress player can't really do anything here by himself. I mean, he can try to get in range, but he'll get harassed. Uh, right now he's being left alone. He's almost level 6. We'll almost have his escape ready. As uh, we're gonna be seeing the supports also rolling back top. So he's gonna be uh, getting support once again. Too fucking good in the meantime. Got two deaths so far to his name. We're gonna be seeing the Visage almost having level 6. Four people from Orange on the bottom lane though. Looking for some action, they've got an RP, they've got everything up apart from the Sonic Wave, but it's the tower they want. They're gonna get the bear first, apparently. He's gonna be pulling back the lane towards the rest of the creeps, but the creeps go down, so the tower uh, is gonna be the target. Not for the creeps, though, they wanna go for the bear, apart from one, so they can Dyer's use this as a tank, and they will go do that. No TP's incoming, it looks like MUFC is just using this time to go for the... Um, to go for some extra farm on the heroes that they haven't gotten so far but the tower will go down it's actually weaver that picks it up the only one that wasn't in that encounter was a vision trying to get the levels up in the mid lane can't really show himself too much because the puck is definitely a threat for him especially considering he's level eight and the vision is still level five uh but it looks like his teammates are just uh, don't worry about well are just doing fine without him like don't worry <laughs> Gonna go for the tier 2. Orange, not giving up, not stopping the push. Sand King, still level 4, doesn't matter. They've got a time lapse, they've got Dying an RP, they've got a Sonic Wave. Come at me, bro, they call. Oh, Weaver, got a time lapse that out over there. I was gonna say, is he is he really doing this or is he AFK? But he is really doing that. Shadow Strike up on the bear. If they kill off the bear, there will be a resummon. Though Radiant's more TP's coming in, they're realizing that the uh, heroes Dyer's are starting to get fairly low with the towns now. Cool, a nice deny from the Lone Druid. There goes the Weaver getting locked out. Open wounds get picked up real fast. Jekyll already latching up on him, so it's now on cooldown. Net running himself away. World Strike is already in cooling. He does have a sandstorm. Shockwave trying to help him out. I don't think he's fast enough though. Uh, here actually comes the NRP. That will help out. Only hits up on one though, but that one does go down. And that one is the life stealer, and it's still the puck that goes down. Sonic Wave actually whips from Mushi, but it doesn't matter. Ling will still go down anyway. Visage is familiar. He's picking those up. Getting that level six definitely paid off with the double damage when he tries to blink after Lone Druid, but Lone Druid is going to be able to stay alive there. And that was the life stealer. This first death of the game. And he uh, gives it up, and he didn't even kill the Sand King, if you didn't realize. Sand King actually got himself out of there. Very, 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 Dyer's very low life. But he attack. did it anyway. Net. You're gonna be lucky with that one. And uh, one kill so far up on Orange. And that one kill, of course, being... Oh, who was it again? The Weaver. The Weaver. Oh, yeah. That was the Weaver just went down in that, in that fight. I mean, he died very fast. But because of him dying so fast, I mean, the Shackle, everything was used on him. Well, the time left was on cooldown, so he couldn't really escape anyways, but he, uh, he got killed off real fast, but the shackle, for example, was used on him, and if he, if the shackle would still be, would have still been up, wow, let's not trip over my words, 
Uh, that would have made a diff definitely big difference as we're gonna see if uh, they're gonna go to score down. There is no RP, they don't seem to care though. Telekinesis is there, and it's gonna be Winter that's gonna still be picked up by Visage's uh, familiars, and that is gonna be the end of that fight, but uh, it's gonna be Huntress player that's gonna be a bit sad because he can't really get in range of the farm again, as we see his net worth just still highest on top of, of his uh, team. But it's just not as high as he would have liked it to be. Dyer's top tower not with now two, uh, two towers already down, and it looks like Orange they've just or they're just surgically removing towers here. They're just I mean, bottom lane done. Okay, let's switch to top. We have got five heroes here from Orange. Uh, well, four actually, because there's still uh, Mushi gonna be here, who's gonna go for a uh, Orchid. Uh, we also have fallen. a smoke up from UFC. Let's see what they can do with that. Gonna come in from behind. There is an RP at 12 seconds though, but they need to hold on long enough. Gonna open up on a visit. The shackle doesn't match, doesn't matter. Net is gonna be picked off second. Gonna be going into the sandstorm, doesn't matter. Sentry ward around there, and it's actually only the Magnus that gets himself out alive. But he's thinking, he's thinking about going back in. Mushi back in now as well as the RP being there. Familiars are gonna try to pick up Winter, and Winter with the scream gets picked up. Now Link gonna be in trouble. The RP hits upon two. Nice shackle. It does latch on Mushi. Doesn't latch on Ohio, who's gonna try to go for the life here, who doesn't get picked up. Scream will still pick up the puck though. Uh, Ling not able to go down, but nice comeback fight from Orange and everybody being back in there very fast. Everybody back alive. We have got the TP towards the mid lane coming off from the Visage. Gonna be there together with the Sand King. They're gonna be pushing the mid lane perhaps. Bottom lane is KYX by taking a bit of farm. And Orange just overall dominating this game. There are 7,500 gold in their favor. With the experience graph, 5,000 in their favor. The kill score, of course, doesn't lie. It is pulling up ahead quite fast for Orange. And if you look at MUFC's lineup, the thing that they need is more time. They don't have, like I said during the draft, like they don't have a hero that makes a difference in mid game that is that big that can turn the attention away from the life stealer and the lone druid. Because life stealer is constantly forced to be in fights because otherwise there's only three fighting. The lone druid needs to farm more. I mean that's obvious. Life stealer can actually be slightly participating in fights if he doesn't die, but he did die, so uh, at least once. It's not really ideal at all, and they just need more time, and then they're not getting it for now. Orange is not letting them rest at all. The tier 1, tier 2 tower got pulled up from the top lane, and now it's mid time for the mid lane, the last lane fallen. there. After those two towers, they're probably gonna try to go for Roche and then just <clears throat> barrel down that mid lane and go for the barracks. But um, until that happens, MUFC is gonna, of course, try to counter push as good as possible, score down, get the puck, kill the puck. Success! Shackle doesn't latch, power shot goes through, but the power shot is only level 3. Doesn't do that much entangle up on creeps because that's cooler than entangles up on heroes, apparently, for the lone druid. Let's see if he can do something here. Power shot. Oh, net. In some trouble. The bear actually chasing him down. But the bear not attacking, actually, awkwardly enough. Don't be taking a lot of damage. We actually have got the medallion, of course. We saw that earlier already. That might be an indication that Roshan is going to be before the tier 2 here, considering MUFC is really defending his tower. But there is an RP again. There is a blink dagger up on Ohio as well. And I think they'll just want to take that. Oh, well, low. And that's the life stealer screw down to the rest of the team. Gets picked up. Now it's time for the rest. Can they take him down? Bear is going to be taking a lot of Rasput. Gets already the medallion, of course, up on there, lowering his armor. But it's gonna be Orange that actually back off. But without the lifestyle, maybe they want to try to go for Roshan right now. No, it's still the tower, still the tier 2 tower. They're not giving MUFC any time to recuperate, which is... I mean, they need that time. And they needed that hero to be able to buy them time, like a Brewmaster, Beastmaster, etc. And Puck, he is doing his best, but he's died five times and is not going too well. Of course, that first blood that he gave away to the Magnus was not really going as intended. Nice shackle, Magnus to Mushi. Can they go in? Telekinesis, Ohio. Might be a bit too ballsy and tackle, so hits the scooter with the bear, and it's actually the tower that gets the last hit. Nice pickup in the meantime, also up on the lone druid with now two for one. I mean, Rubik still died on the sidelines as well, as it silence still hits. Too fucking good trying to run himself away. In the meantime, Sonic Wave clears out the life sealer once again, as uh, the rest is just trying to pick up the pieces, but they can't find any anybody anymore because both of the remaining heroes uh, walk back into their own base, which is logical. Uh, but they also are not going to be able to pick up the tower because there's no creep wave. So that's going to be a bit sad. Because without a creep wave, you can't push down the tower. And I mean, Orange definitely took the fight successfully. With an RP, might have been a bit more successful, but it um, it's GG. Wow. It is GG. 
It is GG Orange dominated the game completely and got a very early GG. The fastest GG that we've seen today, even though we've seen some very one-sided games, it's just MUFC strategy not really working out as intended. They needed more time to um, to get their they get their farm up. That aggressive trial, and even though it didn't really kill off MUFC the whole time, it did. Um, it did shut down the life zero enough. And as I said, or as we heard halfway through the game, the teams have actually decided. Um, Decided to play one game only due to time being so late. Time can't be late, but you know what I mean. Dyer's middle tower is under wow, attack. you can't barely read my name, but you know what I mean. But that is uh, gonna be just one game. Deciding. Orange takes a win for the Asian Gaming League. If you want to check out more about that, you can go to facebook.com slash asiagl and you can find out more there about also the leagues that are upcoming for their uh, for their site. Um, the site's not yet ready. It would be agl.com, but uh, they're, they're going to be organizing leagues and in-houses and everything, so keep an eye on that. Like them on Facebook to be kept up to date on that as well. And... Um, Make sure you also like it just to support these kind of tournaments because the more we have of these, the bigger they get and the more sponsors they get and the bigger Dota gets. And you know, you know likes on Facebook matter for sponsors, so it matters to us. There you go. And uh, thank you for being here, by the way. And oh my god, kudos to you if you've been sticking around here since 4.30 a.m. Because it is now 4.30 p.m. <laughs> Woohoo, 12 hours. But uh, don't go anywhere, though. Don't go anywhere because we're gonna have a Star Ladder Finals coming up. It's a best out of five. Now it's not coming up just yet. It's gonna be coming up in two hours, but I'm gonna be leaving the stream on. Might as well. I'm gonna be showing you some CSGO because that's gonna be before Dota and it's gonna be Dota after that game. It could be a bit earlier, it could be a bit later. And um, we're gonna be seeing that together with Mini. So let's jump ourselves out of this game. Get ourselves some commercials, get ourselves some music, get ourselves some drinks, uh, some food. Can't sleep anymore, unfortunately, a bit too short time for that, but we can definitely enjoy our time and also switch some overlays later on, but I will switch out of this game first. Oh, and of course, if you want to follow me, you can do so by subscribing to my YouTube or youtube.com slash Gaming and everything else you can find on shevergaming.com. There you go. Good. Be right back. <laughs> 